because this is easy to solve and it has exact solutions. It has exact solutions. And our nonlinear uh, our nonlinear equation up here may not have it's it doesn't generally have exact solutions. If we're interested in the current, for example, as a function of time, you put in some capacitor somewhere, and that's gonna be very that's going to very quickly spiral out of control. So we're okay with an a this is obviously nonsense. Uh, this is nonsense because we know the ID is quadratically related to VGS, right? But we want to derive an approximate model. So we want an approximate, just simple voltage controlled current source where ID is equal to Q. And actually let's, let's call this G uh, times VGS. We want this current to be equal to, actually let's, let's, draw, the, let's draw the MOSFET the right way. VGS. We want this current to be equal to just some constant G times VGS. And I use G because, you know, this is looks kind of like Ohm's law, right? I equals GV um, or Ohm's law in, in conductance form. So, okay, how do we get that? Well, we know if we want an, a linear approximation, that almost always means we're going to use a Taylor series. In fact, every time I hear approximation, this is what immediately comes to mind because a Taylor series is probably one of the most versatile tools uh, in our toolbox. And a Taylor series that says, remember that if we've got some function x plus delta x, you can write it as some constant uh, f of x naught plus delta x times the derivative of f with respect to x and so on and so forth. You can add as many terms as you want, but we're only interested in the change. Let, let's say that we're interested actually in the drain current when you apply some VGS plus little VGS. And I'm just gonna draw an over bar over the big VGS so that we can, we can make sure it's, it's very clear. Well, we know that that's gonna be approximately equal to, if we tailor expand this, uh, just the drain current at your big VGS plus delta VGS. Let me put a little delta here. Uh, delta VGS times the derivative of drain current with respect to VGS. But we actually have, and then there's going to be some additional terms here, right? But we're going to ignore them. But we, we, can, we can find this. We know the drain current as a function of VD VGS. It's just one half times KN times VGS minus VT. And if we differentiate this DID DVGS, we just get, oh, sorry, this is squared. Uh, so this two comes out front and we just get KN times VGS minus VT. And here I've drawn it with a little over bar to indicate that this is a constant value. So, and I'm, I'm gonna rename this because it's kind of a pain to have derivatives going on everywhere. I'm gonna call this coefficient GM. And the reason I'm gonna call it that is just because that's what everyone calls it. Uh, every electrical engineer who has ever lived. And so if we rewrite this equation, we've just got that our drain current using our Taylor series expansion is approximately equal to the drain current at some DC voltage, we call this a DC voltage, uh, plus our delta VGS times this derivative, which we called GM. And okay, well that's great, but we've got this annoying term hanging on over here. I, I, thought, I thought we wanted just some proportionality constant G times VGS. And yeah, this is, this is annoying. So what we generally do to get rid of this is we say, well, we're not actually interested in the DC current or we're not interested in the total current, but we're only interested in the change in current, delta ID. And that's just equal to ID 
as a function of uh, big VGS plus delta VGS minus our drain current at big VGS. Okay, and that's just equal to delta VGS times GM. Cool. So that that is our linear model. Um, it's just a voltage controlled current source with the current being equal to GM times delta VGS. And if we draw out the terminals, this is the drain and this is the source. And this over here is the gate. It's sort of, you know, hanging because when we've got our MOSFET over here, uh, we know that the current flowing into this gate is equal to zero. And so we generally just represent this by this hanging terminal here, G, just, you know, so we can draw it. Um, and just so that we're explicit, uh, GM is equal to the derivative of drain current with respect to VGS, which is equal to uh, KN times VGS minus VT. Awesome. Uh, we have our linear model. Um, now, you notice that we cheated a little bit to get here, right? We said that, oh, well, we're not interested in the total drain current. We're just interested in the change in drain current. And we're not interested in the exact uh, drain change in drain current, but really uh, an approximation is probably good enough. Um, so that might bother you. That bothered me a lot when I first saw it. Um, and why, why is this okay to do? Um, well, if you work out the math, uh, you'll basically find out that this is okay, or this is a good approximation uh, when delta VGS is much, much less than the DC voltage of VGS or the, um, you could think of it, think of this as the static component of VGS uh, minus the threshold voltage. So this is when it's okay to use this approximation. When this is true, this approximate model uh, in the limit where delta VGS approaches zero, this approximate model becomes exact. Now, you might have noticed that I swept a couple things under the rug for this. Uh, what about the body effect? And what about the one plus lambda VDS term that's always hanging off the end of our, uh, of our equation that I, I neglected to include? Um, well, these are additional um, complexities to the model that we'll introduce later. Uh, and we'll show how to get them, how to incorporate them into a linear model and how to linearize everything. Uh, but it turns out this model, this kind of simple um, linear model uh, is good for pretty much everything. Uh, so there's some times when we'll want to add more precision, but this is gonna be good to get a good answer uh, or a good first pass analysis of just about any circuit. This is the model that we'll actually use. Uh, and that's really cool and kind of surprising. And I should note that this general process where we take an ugly equation and make it beautiful uh, via the Taylor expansion, this is a general process in engineering and physics. Uh, and if you master this process, uh, you basically master engineering. So uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below, and I'll see you next time.